Good morning. Welcome to Sunday School today. I hear a lot of murmuring, but hopefully no disputing. Uh, people are talking about and fellowshipping. Good to hear. People are still slipping in. I'll give you the time to do so. Uh, we have a new senior of the week. Uh, her name is Joyce. I won't give you all the information since we're now on live stream. Uh, but I did send out by email, and we also have these sheets that we'll offer available later on. But if you'd like to jot her a note or send her a text or make a call, have a visit with her. Uh, she lives in the Ephrata area, and that would be an encouragement. Uh, just a couple of quick updates. Um, the Kilmers will be heading back to South Africa on Tuesday. we we'll be in prayer for them. Uh, also, I mentioned in the early service that the Whites will be heading down to Tennessee for a little bit to uh, get some of their driver's licensing and their vehicle registration and all in order. And so be in prayer for them. They have about a 10-day trip uh, down to Tennessee to take care of those things. Uh, also, Brother Donnie reminded me that the uh, about Carol Scholl coming home and so uh, uh, able to leave after getting her treatment. So we praise the Lord on the progress that was made. Again, all of these things are sent out by email. If you are not getting that either from myself or Pastor Seth or both of us and you would like to receive it, uh, please just get to us your email address. Uh, we try not to send more than about one a day, maybe each of us one a day. Once in a while, I forget something, and I just feel badly about not getting it out there because somebody's asked for a request or something, and you'll get a second one. Uh, so we, we try not to fill your mailbox with all kind of things, and so try to keep it simplified. So uh, anyway, if you'd like to receive information like that, uh, by email, again, the senior of the week, you get all that information right in email. You get the sermon study sheets in email in case you want to print them out and look at them later. Or if you're not able to be here uh, because of sickness, I hear one of our families are uh, battling a lot of sickness and won't be here today. And so sometimes you can just print it out and be able to have that information at home. So uh, we got a lot of things going on. Uh, we've got the Magners soon heading to Mexico City. We've got National Night Out this week. Pastor Seth will be talking about the fact that the bus isn't working well right now, and so some changes in the next couple of evenings uh, of taking people to special meetings. But anyway, let's work forward, and uh, we want to, uh, let's go in our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4. I want to go back to a second, just a second lesson on the follow-up of the flat earth theory. And what I would say is a biblical response to the flat earth theory. I don't ever think it's right for us as Christians to belittle someone because they believe something differently than we do. Uh, I don't think we should do personal attacks uh, of someone who believes differently. I think we ought to just hold to the truth that we believe that the word of God presents and we do so with a a sweet and kind spirit and a pleasant spirit. By the way, great to have Camp Director Courtney Work back with us. Uh, I sent on one of her notes, Camp Director, uh, that I sent to her just to dig at Brother Fry. Uh, we will get, hopefully next Sunday night, maybe get a testimony from Courtney, uh, the great experiences that she was able to have and maybe some struggle with and would just like us to know and pray for about uh, camp and people that she was working with, but we really appreciate her surrender and willingness, and she's back now for uh, the rest of the year for us, so we praise the Lord for that. I was praying yesterday for Nathan as he went up to get her and then as he came home. Uh, back to this, though. So, um, I really think we need, just need to stand on the truths of the Word of God and uh, don't let your spirit get out of line just because you disagree. And we still do believe in individual soul liberty, correct? Uh, somebody can believe something different than us, and uh, we don't have to have an evil spirit toward them. I, I found it interesting as I'm writing out the scriptures, I'm toward the end of Matthew right now. Uh, I like to be constantly writing the word of God and learning that way. I came across two verses, but I'll just read one of them. 
from Matthew 24, and it is on the study sheet. Uh, and he shall send his angels with a great uh, sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And so, wow, it's like, what timing. And then the next verse goes on to repeat some of that similar idea of the four winds and the end of the heaven as well. And so uh, just interesting because some of these verses are now taken to try to present a, a, a theory uh, that I do not believe is biblically true. So I want to talk to you about the flat earth and how it's gendering strife, using a phrase out of scripture. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Father, as we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we're just trying to take your word and we're trying to take the various things that we have learned from it and to present these truths uh, to help us, number one, to understand what is being said and taught, uh, number two, to understand uh, how we can respond or should respond to it, uh, also understand how we should study the scripture, what uh, way do we study it, and then also we want to protect our young people, some of them going through public school. Uh, we'll find some of these things now being taught in uh, public school system. And so we want them to at least have a basic understanding or at least remember it was taught on. They may not remember any of the lessons, but they will at least know that something has been taught that they could go back to or they could engage with a family member or myself about. So I just pray for our young people that may face some of these discussions as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last week, we kind of just worked through some things uh, that I, I thought were important for us. The Lord warned that in the last days that there would be uh, much false te teaching that would take place. And I want to show you from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 here, where he says in verse number 2 to the preacher, he says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. Let me just stop. They, I believe, involves both the quick and the dead. I, I think it's talking about both the saved and the unsaved. The unsaved were discussed in chapter 3 and the Christian at the beginning of chapter 4. And so they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That sounds like an interesting phrase, doesn't it? Uh, the idea of someone who's going to say what they'd like to hear. And it says the end result of that, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. There may not be a better descriptive verse of what has taken place with some of the teachings of these various theories, like the gap theory or like theistic evolution uh, or like the flat earth theory as well. Uh, please understand from the very beginning, uh, when you hear of the flat earth theory, it was actually initially taught, uh, I think it was the 19th century, so just a couple of hundred years ago. And it was actually first promoted by people that were trying to disprove the Bible. Isn't it? it tells you a little bit of something. So the theory didn't start out of a biblical uh, movement. It actually started started by those who were trying to prove that the Bible was not true because they believed that the Bible proved that the world or was speaking that the world was spherical and they wanted to combat that. And so uh, that's, that's interesting to think of and I'll present some other things later. Uh, is also we went and looked at the various uh, topics uh, that the Lord warned that various topics are going to bring up more heat than information, than fact, than truth. And so as a Christian, we need to guard and try to not enter into those types of discussion. Uh, also, and then I, kind of finally, we looked at the fact that very often uh, these points are brought to, these conclusions are made by a wrong interpretation of the Scripture or not a clear interpretation of the Scriptures that are being presented. For instance, uh, their belief is that there are four corners, but the earth is a circle. I, again, that kind of sometimes baffles me. I'm sure they have explanations and for that. They also believe that there's uh, the Arctic Circle makes up a, 
uh, a circle, an ice wall that goes around the world, and that's what kept the flood with, contained within. The problem with that, there, there's no Bible verse, there's no picture, there's not, no clear evidence that there ever was a wall around the entire earth uh, that was keeping the waters from overflowing. Very often as well, people that believe in the flat earth theory, at least the early promoters of that, believed that they were local, small local floods and not the entire earth when the Bible is very clear about that. So again, a lot of times they're taking information and just trying to twist it a little bit, sometimes without any clear backing of the Word of God at all. And so I think what we need to do is just continually look at the Scriptures for what it's saying. Uh, in fact, the idiomatic phrases uh, are, are not, you know, when it talks about the four, four corners of the earth or the four winds of the earth, uh, it's not talking about the earth actually had corners to it. And in fact, even the flat earther would not believe uh, in the, uh, that the fact that there's four corners because they believe it is round when it talks about the circle of the earth. I have found uh, I don't always agree with and especially don't agree with their Bible version choice, but I thought coming across from a Christian scientific view, probably the best information was coming from Answers in Genesis. Uh, just They were pushing people back to a sound belief uh, in uh, the church and not getting information from the internet. They pushed that over and over again. Uh, they support the local church movement and not the internet movement, if I can say it in that way. Uh, and they uh, really just supported great, great information uh, that would give a lot of biblical uh, truths. Now, at, when I said at the end of the week, you might think of something uh, that helped you understand this or a verse that you clearly and several people shared thoughts. And I thought, you know, I'm not really good at teaching others thoughts and I might not present it the way they did. So I'm going to give a couple moments here. If someone, we're just going to, uh, we'll give you a microphone. We won't put a camera on you, but we'll give you a microphone. Is, is there something that one of you believe, uh, you know, is impactful for you? This is something you think is often misrepresented or overlooked. And uh, maybe just one or two things you want to mention. Do we have any volunteers? Uh, I know somebody already says, I, I don't want to be on, uh, I don't want to be a teacher here. And I, I understand that. Uh, Justin, did you have your hand up or no? Or we, you were, you were, you, you got the bid on that, Justin. You, you bought the vase for $4,000. Uh, Justin, I, he put his hand up to his mouth. I thought he was ready to shoot his hand up. Uh, anyone have a verse or a, a phrase or a, just an idea? Uh, I'm not going to look at anybody. Else. Pastor Terry. They're going to bring a microphone to you. He says, I don't need a microphone. Uh, well, I think God has given us some common sense. And, uh, of course, when I look at the moon and I see it's round, I look at the other planets out there that are round, and just the fact that we have our seasons, I just cannot even imagine how anybody could believe that the earth is flat. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense yeah. whatsoever. Um, you know, if it's flat and, you know, it turns, do you think it would be completely dark on one side mm -hmm. and uh, not the other? And, you know, it just doesn't make any sense at all. And it's just amazing how people fall for some of these mm -hmm. things. Um, and uh, like you said, you have to believe in convinced of conspiracy theories if you would believe that because right. – um, I mean, anybody can get a telescope and look out into the universe and see the planets, mm. at least some of them, and see that they are round. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, that's just my thoughts on it that. It brings up a good point. Everything else we are able to look out and see are all, all spherical. Uh, we would say that. And uh, we would see the rotation, uh, the rotation of the Earth uh, to those things. Uh, and so I think it's an interesting thing he brings up, too, about the seasons, the various seasons, and how they can take place at the same time uh, because of the shape of the earth. And these are some of the underlying, you know, when you draw, begin to draw some conclusions. I'll make some comments later. I think that will be helpful in that area as well. Somebody else? Yes, now Justin does. Uh, you did get the vase for $4,000, Justin, okay? Uh,
uh, about 100 years ago or so, there was a person in Britain who uh, put a boat on a river, like a canoe, and shipped down the river. He went a couple, few kilometers. And their justification was they could still see him. But you got to think a few kilometers as opposed to, mm. was it like 360, 350 kilometers uh, around the earth? Right. So in perspective, that was a very small sample. Mm. Yeah, good, good, good thought there. Somebody else? Uh, Pastor Davis, are you willing to share your, your expression that you, uh, I'll, I'll get them. I don't volunteer many, but he's a former pastor. He can handle it. And uh, talking about the idiomatic phrases. Well, I don't know how historians will look uh, back to us, but uh, we're totally wrong in using phrases. We say uh, the sun rose this morning hmm. or the sun set. That's totally inaccurate, and yet we're living in a scientific age. Uh, we should say the dawn and the dusk. And it's just uh, we see the phrases in the Old Testament in the same way that were used as phrases and uh, the same way today, and yet we know what the real truth is behind it. So uh, we can't fault, fault the Old Testament uh, people and the way they express things compared to the way we do it today, which is inaccurate. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, so it's, you're the, the spinning of the earth, it's not the rotation of the sun and the moon. Yes, sir. Uh, somebody else, anyone else? Yeah, okay, Joanna. Joanna sent me a superb video yesterday. Uh, okay, but go ahead. Just real quickly, kind of like what Pastor Terry said, it'd be really hard to have a lunar eclipse if we're not spherical, because the earth comes between the sun and the moon, and then we see the circle of the earth going across the moon. Mm. That'd be really difficult. Or your that. opening couple words would be really... Difficult to have, to have a have lunar eclipse. The, l the lunar eclipse, excellent. And someone else... Uh, made mention of me just in private conversation a couple weeks ago before I actually taught on this, uh, the fact that you can't have the lunar eclipse or the various uh, arguments there. And again, they, they all have their counter arguments, but uh, not taken from a biblical basis. Somebody else, anyone else? Yes, Brother Donnie. So do I understand Brother Donnie has gone into retirement now, and uh, congratulations to him. I was unaware of that until Brother Don said something this morning. So congratulations to you, and I'm sorry to Linda. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> probably, probably the best example would be go into Job when the Lord was asking or having that man-to-man -man talk with Job. Yeah. And a lot of the questions he asked at that time, there was no answers. Yeah. You know, where does the light go? Where does the light come from? Yeah. And I think sometimes we, as Christians, have to trust. But, you know, with the knowledge that we have today, it's just, mm -hmm. how would I say, I don't know how you come up with it. And, by the way, Columbus was the first one that came back with a flat earth surface. He wasn't allowed to. Yeah. They didn't want him to say <laughs> and, and he didn't go very far. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, excellent point, you know, Lord says to Job, where were you? I've been studying Job 28, totally just in my personal time with the Lord. And, and in Job 28, it talks about, I think maybe like verses 9 and 10, two verses it talks about there are paths that no, angel, no animals have ever found yet. There are paths in the earth. And I just think how, how limited our mind is. Uh, I, I think it was uh, Pastor Bortz, and I don't call, if you're listening uh, online, I don't call every man in the church pastor. It's just that we have a lot of pastors in the church and several retired. Uh, but the secret things belong unto the Lord. Uh, but they that are revealed belong unto us and to our generation, our children after us. And there are some things we just absolutely still do not know. What we can't do is make our logical leaps into theological leaps. It's one thing to make a logical leap towards something and you you, know, just, you come to this conclusion logically, and it may or may not be wrong, but, but you do great disservice to the Word of God when you try to make theological leaps and try to make the Bible per, uh, support what you believe. Uh, we're, we are going at it the wrong way when we go with that approach. Let's, let's work through the remainder of Sunday School, and if there's some other comments to be made at the end, we will. I did say last week that I do believe, and this was right at the very end, I do believe you have to really have a conspiracy theory mindset 
uh, to believe in the flat earth. I am not totally debunking all conspiracy theories. Uh, I, sometimes that's been given a wrong idea. Uh, I joked about Secret Service. There is something going on with the attempted assassination of Trump. Uh, what, that is coming out by various emails and texts and so forth. Uh, so there, and I'm not saying I'm jumping onto a bandwagon there, but, but you have to have a conspiracy theory mindset absolutely for this because you have to say all pictures have been reworked and made to look like this or that or the other uh, when you come to this. So I, I'm not totally getting rid of it. Again, I had in my notes even about the eclipse. Uh, Joanna had sent me just a fabulous video that was a number of years old uh, by his haircut and style of hair and so forth. I thought, wow, this was probably done in the 70s or 80s. And uh, it's kind of funny how you can see it. But, but when th th it was first developed, it, this is just a fabulous information. This is just a piece of the fabulous information. It was 25 centuries ago that it was determined by mathematicians that the world was spherical and not flat. I mean, we are talking 23 centuries before flat earth was ever begun to be taught. So it was 25 centuries ago uh, that they began to uh, teach that the world was spherical. And the reason was, in part, as they were in Egypt, they were wondering, why, why is the shadow on this tree so much different than the shadow on that tree? And, and so, and I have the information, the name and all, but, but he actually hired somebody from Walk from Syene uh, down to Alexandria and found that it was, I think, uh, 800 kilometers and he had determined that the earth had to be then on a curvature because of how long the, the shadow was uh, in Syene compared to Alexandria it was basically nothing. And so they, they began to look and they, they would actually fold things and bend things to show that how uh, they, he came to the point to, to, show, to show the arc of the earth and to show how this shadow then would be immensely longer because of the curvature of the earth. He came to the point and conclusion that uh, there's about a 7 degree difference and there's about 50, 70, 7 degree so that the earth is about 400,000 kilometers, which is exactly what it is today. And so this is 6 BC. Mathematicians determined the size of the earth. And he said the reason I was able to determine it was having, I, he said he paid a guy and now we're not getting the verbal testimony of this gentleman, but it's written historically. He paid a guy to walk the distance and measure the distance that he walked. Can you imagine uh, walking 800 kilometers, having to keep d your distance the whole way? And uh, to come to that conclusion without the calculators and without computers and, and be within just a minuscule amount of the exact circumference of the earth is incredible. And so uh, I, I just found that to be an astonishing thing uh, that they came to that idea uh, where we're talking 6 BC and now we're talking 1900 uh, AD, uh, quite a difference in time. Early, early Christians always believed in a spherical world, uh, taking various principles and hearing various things from mathematics and science. Uh, a lot of the other things would come on later. Uh, I think we also have to recognize we're in a po postmodern mindset, uh, which says there is no absolute truth. So if you want to develop a new truth, you're free to do so, uh, because there is no absolute truth. And so you can begin to develop a new truth, uh, which isn't absolutely true. Uh, though you argue it like it's absolutely true. Uh, anyway, I, I think we have to also take that into consideration, uh, why some of this has come about in the day and age in which it has come about. Uh, I, I do believe, I do believe in genuineness of some Christians really wanting the truth, uh, maybe being f persuaded by a friend or a mentor to them. Uh, I would go back to what has been often taught, and even Samantha may just mention, uh, we ought to be getting our our theology from church and not the internet. Uh, that's worth quoting about a thousand times. Uh, we really have, we've, we've done that in parenting and raising children. 
Uh, you know, you, if you listen to the internet, you really need three goats, two chickens, a dog in order to have a proper homestead to raise godly children. And uh, if you have all these things, you can have godly children. And so uh, you got to be really careful uh, where you're getting your theology from. And a great starting point is not YouTube. Uh, that's absolutely true. And uh, sorry if you disbelieve that, but I'm right. Uh, just kidding, just kidding, uh, just kidding. No, I think all of us would agree to that. You know, the foundation, now, tremendously helpful. You need to know where the light bulb is or how to get to that light bulb in order to change the light bulb uh, in the vehicle or the headlight or whatever. Boy, YouTube can be tremendously helpful in those practical things. I am not disqualifying it, uh, but I also think we need to be really careful about this. Uh, rarely are you going to hear these things promoted from the pulpit and uh, taught by theologians, taught by professors of Bible colleges and so forth, especially conservative Bible colleges. Uh, again, these are, these, this development was not from the Christian point of view. And again, I go back to what, what uh, Paul said to Timothy, the time will come when they're not going to endure the sound doctrine. They're going to heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They're going to turn away their ears from the truth and be turned unto fables. Uh, we are living. Uh, Paul also warns to the church in uh, Ephesus that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about by every uh, wind of doctrine and sleight of men, wherein by cunning craftiness they lie and wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love uh, may grow up into him. So the truth that we're receiving ought to help to mature us as a Christian as well. Uh, some, someone said, and I've heard this repeatedly, and I heard an answer to this, uh, that you just have to fly in an airplane to know that the world is, is spherical. Well, actually, the scientists will tell you, no, you're not high enough to, uh, to see it technically. The reason you believe it is because it's also on your screen there right in front of you. And when you look out, you actually cannot see the curvature. They said um, the average plane today is going to fly around 35,000 feet. You need to get at least 50, it's generally 60,000, but if you get 60,000 uh, feet and above, which, what was it, Conair or something years ago, uh, would actually fly at those heights. They said you can actually begin to see the curvature of the earth. So uh, you think, ah, you just need to fly an airplane. Uh, that's not absolutely true. And this was coming by someone who believes in a spherical earth. They said, we just can't throw out our wrong arguments to think that we're defending anything. We've got to come from a, a truth that's solidly based on Scripture. And so that was interesting. Have you ever, maybe you've heard of the black swan photo? Uh, that is one of the things used. Uh, actually, the guy that took the photo and has taught flat earth from the photo says, generally, you'll never get that picture. Uh, it was just an oddity of the waves of the sun rays glimmering off that made it look that way. The guy that took it and is teaching Flat Earth tells you 99% of the time I take a picture, it does not look like that. I just happened to catch it on a day that it made it look like the earth is flat. Now, he's using it ultimately to teach that. Uh, and you can go up and, if you're really interested, you can look at it. Uh, but it made it look like the horizon was in front of the ships and not behind the ships. And uh, the bottom of the ships uh, should be going away because of the curvature. Uh, but if you can catch it at an odd time with the sun rays just reflecting in a certain way, they said you can come up with a very few photographs that way. It is one of the absolutely few that there are in the world, if not the only one. So think about all the people trying to prove the earth is flat uh, this one guy's got a photograph that makes it look that way. The rest do not. And so I think that's very interesting. Uh, I truly believe that God created this world in six literal 24-hour days. And God had created everything, and it was very good when he was done. God said from the end of that, there should be a day of rest. And he set into institution that which the children of Israel and that Christians should also practice, that there would be a six days to labor and a seventh there should be rest. I am not taking this opportunity to preach against nursing and other things that need to be done on a Sunday or anything like that. I'm just saying God had established the principle. Uh, I do not believe that God worked for 6,000 years and said take 1,000 years off. 
uh, I'm in trouble. Donnie, you can't retire yet. Uh, uh, you didn't put your full 6,000 years in. Uh, no, I, I really believe that God had created this world wonderfully. Uh, again, uh, the thought was brought out about the spinning of the earth is probably from verse 2. Uh, when the Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, the truths can come up about the open firmament, when the birds flew in the open firmament uh, to, of heaven. Uh, I, I just read a verse this week, had nothing to do with this study. It was in my personal relationship with the Lord about how the, uh, the uh, stars falling out of the heaven, and you think about the various heavens and the atmospheres there are. Uh, flat earthers will believe that there is a, a uh, basically a glass dome and everything is concealed within that glass dome. Scripture talks about an open firmament uh, where the birds are able to fly in and out of. So again, I, I think when you take some of those specific verses, I think you need to come to that fact. Again, I am not preaching against those who hold to those other positions. I just want you to fully understand they are taking many of the parts of scriptures that are figures of speech and making them into literal statements about the earth. We've already taken several of them. If you need to listen back to last week, you can, and see that that was God, not God's intention from the very beginning. I don't really want to stretch this any further, as God has stretched out the earth. Uh, but does anyone else have a comment they'd like to make? In the Yes, Brother Anthony. Brother Anthony is one of our deacons. I appreciate he and his wife, Toon, and their faithfulness. I think just, um, you know, I'm familiar with the scientific study that Justin mentioned. And, you know, so let's take that and, and take a biblical principle that we can gain from that. So it's, you know, this idea that uh, if you put a, something far enough away and you can still see it, then therefore the earth is not curved. Well, that's actually, number one, built on a logical fallacy because it's not accounting for the refraction or bending of light, right? Mm -hmm. It's also cherry picking one specific piece of evidence uh, against the overwhelming uh, <coughs> evidence that's been given. Things like, you know, the Joanna said or Pastor Terry, all these overwhelming em evidence, right? Well, we can do the same thing with the Bible, right? We can choose a specific verse, cherry pick some statement. Mm -hmm. We can ignore the overwhelming evidence that's presented in the Bible and we can have a logical fallacy. It's built on the wrong context of what the verse is saying. And so um, you know, I think take that same principle and how we approach what we gain from the Bible. You can apply this to things like alcohol consumption, right? We can take one verse from the Bible and say, what says this? And ignore everything else mm -hmm. because it says what we want it to say or, or many other things. So I think just take this principle and apply it to how we gain information from the Bible as well. Excellent, excellent. Someone else. Yes, Becky, and then we'll. Well, um, I've been meditating on Psalm 19 recently, and it says, mm. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. So the very things that you were discussing about how this man figured the, the distance around the earth, that it's spherical, that it's the shadow was longer here, all of that is because of the consistency mm -hmm. of God's laws in nature that they could, the, the, the stars, I mean, how did people circumnavigate the earth because before we had GPS, because of the stars. So we have these things to show us, to teach us, to show us knowledge. But also the scripture talks about when, when God brings judgment to the earth, one of those forms of judgment is to take, to make wisdom seem like foolishness. Mm -hmm. And so, I, again, we're in a post, like you said, a postmodern mm -hmm. era. So we, that meaning that in this time we are taking wisdom, you know, just even the, the male and female issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're taking things that are known facts and we're dismissing them. And, but that's part of, the judgment on ourselves because we refuse to listen to the Lord. Very good. Very good. Brother Mike's right behind you. I got a thousand thoughts about this, but I'll try to narrow things down to. But, you know, part of it is, and at least the people I know that believe that theory, that somehow the government is so evil that they've created this 
huge conspiracy, which, again, we've debunked over and over. It's not just our government. It would have to be all the governments of the world. It would have to be all the centuries of the governments of the world. And, right. and, and it's just not logical. But I, so much of what's, there's so many things on the internet now that people fall for and believe that are just, you know, the Bible says, be, uh, professing themselves to be wise, they become fools. Yeah, and, you know, we were talking, we, we talk a lot about the end times now and the coming of Christ, and, you, and there's all kinds of things out there. And it's funny because a lot of the people that are preaching that Christ and setting dates and Christ is coming are ones falling for this. And, you know, I, I see how when the Bible says that after the rapture of Christ, that those who rejected the gospel, that God's going to send them a strong delusion that they'll believe a lie. And, and mm -hmm. all the people of the earth somehow believe the lies that are told. You can see how easily that could happen. But people just accept the f most far out and far reaching things. And it's, it's amazing to watch how the mind of man can be yeah. so easily uh, fooled and, and uh, deceived. Good, good point. Um, I'll be glad to move from this subject. I like to uh, preach the word and not have to look at notes, so I'm, I'll be totally glad to be out of this. Sorry, we, we've gone long already. Uh, there was a little guy named Wade. I think he has a middle name, James Custer, born back in June, and we have a New Testament. I'll, I'll give it to you. Uh, but James is quite a significant middle name because of his grandfather there, but congratulations. Amanda, and uh, we have a New Testament. We're praying for you as you bring him up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. God bless you. I, again, I'm sorry I can't go longer. A number of other people had their hands raised, and uh, maybe you can go on YouTube and describe your positions. <laughs> <laughs>